Stop him! He stopped him! He stopped him! He stopped him. He stopped him. Nice block! Wow! Great penetration surged through the middle of that. Michigan State first and goal. Touchdown! Mike e. Yeah! It. Outstanding play. You are looking live. <laughs> I feel like Brett Musburger. Yeah. Inside the locker room with your co-host no Brian stop now, baby. Along Push through. with my co-host Jason Strayhorn. Honorable, how you doing? Yes, sir. How you doing, brother? Hey, I am fantastic. Been a big week. Been a tough week. Tough but, week. But you know, Spartans, you know what we do, man. We persevere through the tough times. That's what we're about. Tough week. Being green ain't easy, baby. Tough week. You got the presser, beginning of that presser right there. Sums it all up. Um, recruiting is where we're going to close the gap. And so that's, you know, that's because we, we need more depth. Um, we need more guys that can win one on one. Um, and so um, that's, I think that's obvious. And that's, I mean, that's not, that's not, and I don't think that's news, actually. Everybody's really paying attention. So it's you know it's execution, you know obviously, and then um, and then we're gonna and then we're gonna have to we're gonna recruit like crazy, like we've been doing. We're gonna continue to do that, um, and we're just gonna be relentless in and and, and and doing that, and um, and we're and we're built to do that. We're built to recruit at a high level, um, and we'll continue to, to work to improve our team get as healthy as we possibly can and get ready for this next game. But for, like big picture, you know, that's what we need to do. We need to, we need to recruit like crazy. Got to hand the coach talk, huh, Stray? Of course you got to hand it to him. You know, he, he understands this game. I mean, he's been around. I mean, he knows that after a loss like this, it was an epic loss. I mean, there's only one way to, to – to, meet this and that's head on and that's exactly what he's done he, he told his team you know there's no, not going to be any excuses you heard that you know I mean this guy he coach Tucker understands how to overcome bad losses and, and you know this isn't something that everybody's anybody's proud of at all uh, going to Ohio State going down to Columbus facing the number four ranked Buckeye team um you know, let's face it, Brian, me and you know it. Everybody knows it. Spartans, I mean, like, like we don't want to use it as an excuse. If I'm a coach, that's what I'm going to say to you. But in in the real world that we live in, I mean, man, they're playing with, like, one arm tied behind their back and, and, and the other one might have been broken. It's not easy, man. You got the three, two, three of the best wide receivers in America on one team, and they had a day, man. I mean, this is this is something that uh, Michigan State would have had to play a perfect game, an unbelievable game, to even be considered for this. And when you look at who actually played in this game and who was healthy, uh, and for Ohio State, they came out and they were clicking on all cylinders and. You know, hats off to them and Ryan Day and, and his staff for putting together a great game plan and knowing that the matchups were just way too much for Michigan State defense, especially in that secondary, to keep up with the uh, the fast receivers and the accurate passing of of the quarterback for for Ohio State. You know, I, I think you hit it the nail on the head, right? I mean, it's all about matchups. Football is a game of matchups, and. Um, it's very hard to win and compete when your your weakest uh, link on your on your team is is their strength. I mean, it's just clearly a matchup situation. And given the attrition, given the um, the, the the amount of depth that we have, um, I hate to say this, but you know, a lot of us feared a, a situation like this. Um, you know, it's just, it was not a matchup made in heaven. And, you know, did we expect 49 nothing at halftime? No, we didn't. Could have been uh, worse. Could have been worse. Oh, could have been a lot worse. I mean, it could have been a lot worse. And, uh, you know, hats off to the Buckeyes and the way they played. And we're not going to make any excuses. Um, injuries or not, they, they took their strength and exposed their weakness. 
and um, you know you got to give them credit for it. I mean, there there's Ohio State, and then there's everybody else in the Big Ten, and I mean, Coach made it very clear. I mean, Coach talked about how we're going to close that gap, but uh, you know, when you watched that game and you saw, first of all, I don't think the talent gap. I, I know the score says differently, but I don't believe that talent gap is 49 nothing at halftime. I believe it's a combination of a lot of things. One of them is yeah. injuries. One of them is lack of execution. Um, yeah, 49 nothing. Yeah, that's, yeah, that, that, that's, that's not. I mean, we, we, you and I have been it, playing this game a long time. Yeah, like if you, when you correlate it like that, like for, for, for me, you know, I mean, we're, we're close to this program. We, we're close to football. We understand how this works. And it, it's a matchup issue. You know, Michigan State, Obviously, they, they gave up 536 yards through the air to, to Purdue. Let's not – we can't forget that. And Purdue is they're, – they're a very strong team, but nowhere near. They don't have the caliber of athletes that Ohio State has, as evidence as you see here. They have, I think, Ball. I forget the guy's name at Ohio – at uh, Purdue. Uh, but, you know, Ohio State has three guys – as good, if not better, than that one receiver that Purdue had. And they all three had record days. Three receivers over 100 yards. I think it was 140, 130, 110. You know, one touchdown, two touchdowns, two touchdowns, respectively. Five touchdowns between three receivers, primarily in the first half. That's, that's unheard of. Uh, and, and, but it was speaking to the matchup issue that Michigan State faced coming into this ball game and we talked about a lot of this during the pregame if if Michigan State wasn't able to get pressure well, they needed to get pressure on CJ Stroud the freshman the youngster behind the you know under center at Ohio State if you can get pressure on him make him move his feet get uncomfortable maybe you have a chance Brian but it looked like on Saturday there was no pressure. Michigan State had no option. They had no answer, no counter to what C.J. Stroud and his offense was putting out there, and that was just dissecting the Michigan State defense at will, putting up 49 points, as you said, before halftime. I mean, as Spartans, I mean, that's painful. I get it. You're watching that game, and you're cringing, and you're just like, Oh my God, make it stop. <laughs> I get it. I totally get it. And this is part of football. This is part of the maturation process of a program. This is part of understanding where you're at, where your depth is at, and understanding about what it takes to get to the next level. And it's, it's ugly. It wasn't fun. It didn't feel good. Um, you got a lot of, you know, you're, you're on social media. You had a lot of comments about Tucker's contract, a lot of Michigan fans weighing in, and I get it. Mm. It's not fun, and that's, you know, that's part of the game. That's what makes it so beautiful, right? It's that you're here one day, and you're here one day, and it's a very, football is a very humbling game, and I totally understand how every fan has felt. Totally get it. It's, it's just one of those days you just want to forget and move on and, like, ill, discard that. Let's not talk about that anymore. But big picture, thinking big picture and understanding where, where we thought we were at the beginning of the year to where we are right now, to where we need to go, right, and looking at those things and understanding, as Coach Tucker said in his press conference, that after his first couple of scrimmage, he talks about the good news is we have enough playmakers that to we can make a difference. The, the bad news is, is we do not have the depth. And you're seeing that right now in week uh, 10 or 11. You're seeing that lack of depth. You know, as these injuries begin to mount, you're beginning to see kind of the drop off. And this is where it's going to take, you know, Rome wasn't built in a day. It's going to take years of recruiting, years in the portal, years of putting this stuff together to be able to compete day in, day out with the top tier, the tier one programs. And I mean, you gotta give coach credit. I mean, coach talked about how important recruiting is and building depth is. And like Saturday was not fun being a Spartan, 
but let's rewind let's put things in perspective and let's understand that this is a process it's a process and trust the process mm, you got to trust the process that's something the coach talks about ad nauseum if you want to you know go there because looking at Michigan State and and where they've been before like it, it's it's amazing to me and, and we talk about this a lot you and I talk about it a lot of people I've talked to you know we <clears throat> we 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 breach this this uh this topic and it's like before the season started everybody you know said hey look if we get to be bowl eligible I'll be elated and you know one thing about human nature the thing about human nature is that we're we're an insatiable bunch of people. We are. So you jump out to an eight and no start. So you're you've you've like taken what Coach Mel Tucker says, the house money. You're playing with house money. And now you get to be eight and one and then you're you're nine and one and then you get to be nine and two and all, all of a sudden it's a problem. It's what how do we get here? This, these guys suck. To fire this guy. This guy ain't worth this much money. It, it's amazing how fast in literally 11 weeks, 12 weeks including the bye, we've gone into the tank, sounding like a bunch of whining babies because we feel like we should be, you know, playing for the national title. Now, now those guys in that locker room – clearly had to have a belief that they could be there in order to be in the position that they're in. But those of you who are being critical, me, uh, uh, I don't, I'm, I'm going to, those of us who are being critical need to check ourselves because when you look at this, the full body of work, the trajectory of this program is exactly where it needs to be, but ahead of schedule. Uh, ahead of schedule. Ahead of schedule. Absolutely ahead of schedule. You know, when you look at where it was just a few months ago. So, I say to you, I say to you, Brian, I say to the rest of the Spartans out there, patience. That's what we need. We need patience when you're developing a team of young men. This, this is football. This is not basketball. One player doesn't change everything. Rome wasn't built in a day. Think, Great think football about what programs. you're saying right now. You're saying we're a 9-2 team playing for our 10th win yeah. in a season in which they expected us to win four and a half games, and you're saying patience. Yeah, it's incredible. How realistic is that? <laughs> think about that. It's, I, I think it's ridiculous, but it, it's where we are as a society right now. We have to be... We have to we have to educate ourselves. We have to educate the public at large. But remind about remind, remind everybody. Patience is what we need. Uh, who who sung that song? Is that one of them boys? Uh, oh, Luther Vandross. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Luther Tom, Tom Brady is HGH. Oh, what? What happened? Goodness, there you go with Tom. Oh, I'm sorry. Wrong comment. Wrong. It's Axel. Axel Rose. <laughs> All we need is a little patience. Hey, but what are we patient for? Brothers know we're, that song hold on, hold on, too. Hold on. We were playing with house money. We were expected to win four and a half Come games. Come on now. Man. What are we patient for? This is a special, special year. We have a chance Saturday to win 10. It's a beautiful year. Right? We have a chance to win 10. We've beaten our arch rival, you know, short of hoisting the natty and the Big Ten <laughs> East. I mean, how much more could you expect? So, like. It's a binary business. I love it, that. It what is Coach a binary said. business. He said it on Monday. Yesterday he said it's binary. It is man. a binary business, right? <laughs> there are ones and there are zeros, wins and losses. Yeah. Totally binary. W's and L's. That's Coach it. Tuck. Coach oh, Tuck. I appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> it, I mean, is a, got, it is a binary business. People don't realize the brilliance of that guy. They're like, for real, you, you may not know the guy, but like, dig deep. <laughs> when you hear him dig speak, deep. man, you, you guys, guys don't get it. I'm telling you, when you talk about the way he talks, <laughs> and he's so, like, just quiet and nonchalant, and it's just a binary business. But he's dropping jewels along jewels. the way. Jewels. <laughs> you guys don't even notice him. 
because of his tone, <laughs> classes he had on today, just the jewels that he drops. Binary business, W one zero wins and losses. Dude, I was turning the, t the radio on the other day, man, and and somebody called in and said, you know. He's the, the, this contract talks. By the way, the contract isn't done yet. But the contract talks. The contract. They, they're saying, well, you guys were on uh, what's the guy down the road there, Harbaugh. Well, you know, I think that you got to look at this guy, get rid of him. Like they, they're they're already ready to fire him before he's even signed. He before he signed the contract for a year that he hasn't completed yet. In a season where he wasn't expected to do anything, it's like if you really, if you can unwind that and unpack business, this Jason. and see how ridiculous that sounds, <laughs> I mean, it's it's incredible. So ridiculous. This isn't year five, six, seven. You, you, he, he's only the first Michigan State coach that ever beat Michigan in his first two attempts. The, that's that's all. He, that's all he is. That's all he is. But. He ain't worth the money. I'm going to shake my Get head right now. Him. Hold on. Give me the camera. I'm going to shake my head. <laughs> because you guys Shame and women, you. you have no idea what you got coming. None. Talk. Talk's coming. <laughs> He's coming. I'm, I'm telling you. <laughs> talk coming. You got something special. Man, you got that brow going. I like that. Shit. You I, like that, I like, right? I, I see how you okay. did that. You did that. All right, a little bit of. You look like that boy, that that one coach over at Michigan that did the <laughs> on the sideline in the first quarter. <laughs> coach, hey, coach, we ain't forgot about you, coach. <laughs> I don't know why that. Uh, hey, that's you, you gonna do that on Saturday, coach? No, I, we'll, you know, we'll, hey, we'll see that same post Saturday when they play against Ohio State. But <laughs> show me pr Tuck's press conference, Tuck's uh, comment about just about owning it and getting better and recruiting. Can you play that for us? Because can't do that when we confront it. I mean, because, listen, if you're in this game moving enough, you know, as a player, as a coach, you're going to have days like this. You know, it's just inevitable. It's going to happen. Like, it's just going to happen. And you want you don't want it to happen. You do everything you can to avoid it, um, and I hope this never happens again. But if it does, or when this, when things like this do happen, it's all about how you respond. It's all about how you handle yourself. It's all about having class, you know, having some maturity, you know, uh, you know, keeping your head up, you know, staying focused, blocking out the noise, um, and and going to get and, and looking to get better. You know, someone asked me last week, can you get better um, at this time? Or can you still get better as a, as a, as a team? I said, yeah, absolutely. We can always get better. As a guy, you know, coach, he's got no excuses. Talks about recruiting. That's how we're going to close the gap. We're going to get better. Gets up there. And he's got this way of handling the press, right, about just – acknowledging their faults and acknowledging about what happens in the locker room, stays in the locker room. And, you know, honestly, he's just honest, right? I mean, we're going to close the gap with recruiting. That's how we're going to do it. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you got to give him credit. I mean, you got to give him credit. <clears throat> so we got blasted. We're going to own it. We're going to move on. Got to watch the film, figure out what was good, what was bad from the film. Not a whole lot of good. Look at the bad. Because you have to be able to face it, own it, in order to improve from it. It's not always fun looking at what you've done wrong, right? How many people have done something wrong in their in their life, in their in their relationships, at work, in a sport, and, and they just want to highlight it. Want to let's replay that, boss. What, let, let's rewind exactly what I did wrong on the in front of everyone. And let us all critique it. That's that's what you're at. That's what this is what they are doing. It's it's tough to face the music, and you know this is what you have to do. You don't whine, as he said, and and don't complain. You don't you don't blame, you know, injuries. You don't blame referees. You don't blame play calling. You don't blame any of that stuff. But you do do self scouting, which they've done a great job of doing that uh, to date. So. 
you know, Mel Tucker, he gets this. He he was very honest with everyone too, and he said, "The way that we're going to get through this is through recruiting." And and you know, quite honestly, Brian, like this is where we come to right now in in the trajectory of this program and Michigan State. What are they going to do in order to 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 help Mel Tucker and help this program get to where it needs to be from the recruiting standpoint? I think one of the things, obviously, is going to be you know, win more ball games. You have another game plus a, a bowl game. Uh, that that's that's huge, and also, you know, solidifying the future of this program in the contract talks. Which we're going to talk about a little later. But you know, when you talk about like in our lifetime, um, competing against Michigan in the state of Michigan, competing against Ryan Day in the state of Ohio, right? When it comes to recruiting, because we all know that's the lifeline of college football. And you see Ryan Day in Ohio. You see um, Mel being from Cleveland, understanding the terrain in Ohio. You name me one coach in America, name me one, that's better suited than Mel Tucker to out-recruit Ryan Day in Ohio. Just t- mm. name me one. Yeah, I'm, I'm being you, honest. You, name you me know, one. Well, you know I can't name one. I can't. There's no way you can na- He's from Cleveland. We, we know he's going to eat Harbaugh's lunch in Michigan. There's no question about that, right? Yeah. Once we get a long-term deal in place, there's no question. But you name me one other coach that's going to walk into Ohio and eat Ryan Day's lunch. I'm being, I'm being dead I'm not being a homer. I'm being – he's from Cleveland. He's got swag. He understands NIL. Big Ten roots. Recruiting. Big Ten roots. Name me somebody that can walk in pound for pound in every school in Ohio and compete with Ryan Day. Can you name one? Nick Saban? No. No. Right? And Nick gets what he wants. No, I'm but, Nick, but, Nick, but, but Nick yeah, gets what he wants. Yeah, not, not, not against a Mel Tucker at Michigan State. Uh, especially with the contract we've been hearing about. Yeah, but what I'm saying, like, like this no. is... These are his roots. This is where he's from. It makes and, sense. And it just makes sense. I, I cannot think of one coach that will walk into the state of Ohio and compete in every city, including Cleveland, where he's from, right? Saint and let's Ignatius. be honest. Like, you know, Ohio has a lot of talent. For those listeners or people what, who they got 300 power they, 65 kids a year. I mean, they got a lot. You know, Michigan may have 25, 30. Ohio State will triple them. Ohio, Ohio, the state of Ohio, not Ohio State. The state of Ohio will have a lot more talent in the sport of football than Michigan does on a year-by-year basis. So it's important. You saw that with D'Antonio, Mark D'Antonio. He went and recruited the fertile ground of Ohio. He's an Ohio guy himself from Zanesville. Now you have another coach who was a grad assistant here, but also from Cleveland, Ohio. Uh, a very fertile recruiting round. He hasn't forgot that and forgotten that, and his parents still live there. They come, you know, as we, we found out a couple weeks ago. It's their first time coming to a, a game in a while. So Mel Tucker, he, you know, this is, this is not going to be uh, – this is not a fly-by-night situation for Mel Tucker. That's all we can say. Not at all. So now as we move towards um – The biggest concern we have heading into Penn State is injuries are now beginning to mount, right? I mean, you're seeing Horst was out, Carrick was out, uh, Jaden Reed left the game early, Xavier Henderson left the game early, Naylor's out, K-9 had a bad ankle, Um, you had a series, Crouch didn't start, I don't believe. Uh, You're having a series of guys that are just not banged up, and we're heading into we're playing a Penn State team who who who's much better than the record. Had their quarterback yeah. hurt for a couple games, and you know we, we're not very deep. And and every team this time of the year, you know they have injuries, right? I mean, there's no question. I mean, it's just a war of attrition. So when we're walking into this Penn State game, we're not trying to make excuses, but. Really, the likelihood of them winning this game with this many guys out 
you know, it, it's very, very challenging. I mean, of course, we're Spartans. We believe they're going to win. We believe, you know, it's senior day, home crowd's going to do what they have to do. But, you know, we're, there's going to be a lot of names playing that we don't know. And I think, I think sometimes when we, you know, we, we look, we take each game by game, and we, we forget about the big picture, about long term, what this means to the program, and building depth. You know, these injuries might hurt the short term opinion of people public opinion but you know i mean coach said right injuries it, it, you win or you lose right it's a binary game yeah but talk to me about the injuries and how that's going to affect uh, uh this game going forward you know like we don't know who's going to be ready to go come saturday it's three thirty on saturday you know, it, 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 the way it looks right now, there's a lot of people who may or may not be in this ball game. But I'll tell you one thing that will be there, and that's the, the mindset of the guys who are physically able to play. And when you look at Mel Tucker and what he's been able to do, it, it's really throwing those excuses to the side. It's really focusing on the task at hand and, and truly looking at the next man up mentality, really looking at that in, in, a, in a way that, you know, guys, conventional wisdom may tell you, like, this isn't the way to go. Like, you know, Michigan State, they have a lot of injuries in the secondary, but I think Michigan State matches up better with Penn State because Penn State doesn't necessarily throw it around as much. They try to run it. They're, they're, they're uh, very good. One receiver is very good. Yeah, they have, a, they have one, not three, like Ohio State. You know, Penn State – you know, just announced today, too, that there is a contract extension uh, that has been signed, I guess, or, or come to a terms with uh, James Franklin, Coach Franklin. You know, Franklin uh, has been rumored to be uh, looked at. Every year he's rumored. Yeah, USC, uh, LSU, uh, Florida just opened up this week. And... They've taken that off the table. You know, hats off to the Penn State folks for being able to get that done swiftly. And, you know, no one even heard about this. Brian, I, I don't know. You're, you're an insider. Um, of no, where? No, no one ever heard. No one heard a peep of this, and all of a sudden it's done. And I, I just keep going back to, like, you know, that helps. What that does, that helps recruiting. Because I'll tell you one thing. In recruiting, what recruits are hearing, and I'm talking about those high-level recruits, those four- or five-star guys that everybody covets, what they are hearing on the phone from everyone else is, he ain't signed that deal yet. You better come over here. He ain't signed it yet. You better be careful. He ain't. W w why? So what, has, what Penn State has been able to do is come out and make the announcement. They've made the announcement in order to prevent the negative recruiting from taking place. This is what's important here, guys. Calm down, Jason. It's important, Brian. Calm down, Jason. No, Brian. It's important that you understand I, that delay I, is negative. I fully understand the delay. And I understand when there is a lack of communication, negativity fills the void. I totally understand that. But before we get Why there. Why haven't we signed the contract? Hold up. Before we get there, let's talk about them Penn State Nittany Lions. Right. They're coming into East Lansing. Penn State. Unbelievable. Right. Talk a little bit about the keys to the game coming off a 28 nothing win. Right. You're, you're looking <laughs> at uh, Man. Sean Clifford's uh, semi-healthy. And earlier, I mean, there's a they, whole lot of COVID over there. They Not were, COVID, they were but, but flu 10, or something. They were, flu listen, was ripping through that that They were uh, a top 10 team to begin the year. Had some injuries. They're a very good football team. Obviously, we got to let's, – let's sound like a, um, you know, a, what's a, a repeated – what's it? Broken record. Broken record, yes. Get <laughs> up the field on third down. Stop yeah. The, get, stock big plays. Red zone field goals. Canine's got to go off, though. If Canine wants to get invited to New York, he's got to go off. What do you think? 
Yeah, you know, I think he's going to get invited to New York either way. I think that it would be great for him to go all the way off. If he wants a chance of winning it, yeah, you, you, you have to go all the way off. And that means, you know, some kind of record type, threatening a record, if not breaking a record type of performance for K-9 against the Nittany Lions, which has been done before in Spartan Stadium. Don't forget, back in 1997, they had, you know, two running backs over 200 yards. If, if, if K-9 is a guy that can do that, you know, maybe take all the yards itself or that offensive line gets going and, and rolls some people up. It's a tough game. It can happen. You got but senior this is day. Not, yeah, it's senior You got a day. chance for 10 wins. It's a big game here. It's a really, really big game. It's a statement game. Yeah. Come on. If we get that 10th win, get a possible New Year's Day 6 bowl, uh, this is a very, very huge game to play Saturday. What kind of crowd are we expecting? Student section, deep end. Do we expect you there? Show up. Show, Show up. up. Come on now. Hey, we got six of these a year. Spartan Stadium. Eat your turkey and your mashed potatoes and your dressing or your stuffing, no whatever car- you call it. No that. carbs on Friday. And hurry up back to East Lansing. Saturday morning, get up there and get there. We got a 4 o'clock kick. Yeah, 3.30. 3.30. 3.30. Come on now. You can wake up by noon and hurry Come up and get now. back. You know. We need that stadium packed out of respect for our seniors, respect for a 9-2 and two season. And uh, a chance to win 10. This is special here. Get there, get there, get there, get there. I'm talking to the students. This is special here. Deep in. We got to take, we got to stop the deep plays, get out the field on third down, and red zone field goals. That's really what we got to do. We got to get some guys healthy, too. Yeah, I mean, they're going to try to do their best to get. Hey, listen, that, that is what it is injuries, treatment, getting guys back. That's that's a part of the business. But <clears throat> being able to have a, a full focus effort when you show up on Saturday, hey, man, that's on those guys that are going to be wearing the helmets and wearing the green and white. S- senior day. You're going to be playing for something greater than yourself. Senior day. Can you remember your last time at Spartan Stadium as a player? I do. How was that? It was weird. I was like, wow, I saw all five of my ears flash before my eyes. I was like, wow, it's done. My mom and dad walked out, and I was like, wow. I was, I was in a daze, actually. I could not believe it was my last game there ever. You know, Woody Hayes made a great statement. Woody Hayes said, college football is the greatest exper- experience you'll ever have, but it's something you will never repeat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got to agree with that. <laughs> it was the greatest Never. experience I've ever had in my life. But if they said to me, go back and start your freshman year over, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> it was it was that difficult and that hard. But the, the lifetime bonds and memories and teammates and camaraderie, that, that senior day is very emotional. It's very special. I'm telling you, it's, uh, it's something. Um, enjoy that moment. That moment's special because you can't get it back. You really can't. Chance to win 10, though. That's special. It's a huge – it's special. It's extremely special for those seniors, guys that may or may not be coming back. You know, know, the the jury's still out on K-9. Will he come back? He's not a senior, obviously. Oh, come on now. Will will he come back? Come on now. No, there's those that think that there's a chance. Come on now. I'm just telling you. He ain't coming There's back. Guy, like Connor Hayward just got invited to the Senior Bowl. He ain't coming back. Shout out to Connor. Good job, Connor. G- great job for him, man. Glad and, to have you back. And, you know, he's going to uh, forego his senior year, according to him right now. Uh, but, look, Coach Mel Tucker said it this week. He said they're all welcome to, you know, either go in early as seniors or come in late and then change their mind because this is a COVID era that we're living in. Guys are allowed to make that choice to come back for their fifth and sixth years de- depending on uh, what, what's what gone on in their careers. So, yeah, like th- you're, you're right. I mean, that, that that it's a finality to that, that senior day. He, you know, he's also been very welcoming to uh, pro scouts. The word around, oh, word around the league is open door policy. 
Come on in. Yeah. Enjoy yourself. Watch our players. We're pro scout friendly. Get the I wonder right, why that is. Get the right read on our kids. Yeah. Accurate information is what he said. Accurate. And so, like, what does that do? The, to me, that's just marketing. To me, that's telling anybody who wants to come to Michigan State, like, listen, like, we're going to promote you. You know, we go, we've go. we gone to practice lately. You've been to practice. And you see the guys. You see all the scouts. And they're, they're working it, man. I mean, they're talking to, uh, you know, the, the, the academic guys. They're talking to the strength and conditioning people. They're talking to all the, the people that know these players inside and out because those are the guys who see the players every day, more so than even the coaches. That's something that I guess most people don't really know. But players – see strength and conditioning guys and academic people more than they see coaches. So pro scouts know this. So guess who they're talking to? The guys that see them every day. Because they don't want to know. They know what kind of player they are based on film. Well, they want to know what kind of human being they are. So this is all goes into the marketing. You know, with pro scouts, as Mel Tucker has said, they don't like unknowns. Nobody likes unknowns. Nobody likes unknowns. No, no. You know I'm, who else don't like unknowns? Recruits. <laughs> Recruits. This is true. They want to know if their coach is re-signed. Yeah. If he's here to stay. Talk about it. You talk about it. Tell us. <laughs> Tell Mel, us. Mel Tucker's extension. Where are we? That's a good question, Brian. I mean, we, we've all been sitting here with bated breath. Waiting like like a little kid at the window still like is that is is daddy coming is he is that him do I see him like we're waiting we're all waiting why are we waiting Brian well first let me say this I think um, an extension like that will send shock waves across the country there's no question but it's already leaked that's fine. But it also sends a message to every recruit. And it, it sends a message that we're here for the long haul. We're here for business. We mean business. And that this is where we want to be. And if you come to Michigan State, you are going to have a coach that's here to recruit you, to help grow you as a man, and to, be, to develop you as a human being. And, and maybe become an NFL player. And so I think that, that $95 million in 10 years, it's bigger than Mel Tucker. It's much bigger than Mel Tucker. It's sending a message to the country that Michigan State is a destination spot, that it's a place where you want to come to play, and that it's a place where if you come here, we are going to prepare you not only for the NFL, but more importantly for the real world. And that's where I give the university credit. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you said that very, very eloquently and, and very, very well. Uh, you, when you look at Mel Tucker and this particular contract that he's embarking on, you know, when, whenever the, the deal gets done, we're, we're all confused. We're all sitting around waiting for oh, it to get We ain't confused done. now. <laughs> we, know, we know exactly what we're waiting for. Uh, we, what, what, what are we waiting for? We're gonna, we're, we're, we're gonna what? We're gonna we're gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> a waka, waka, there, there ain't no confusion here. A waka, there ain't no confusion. No, no, no. Oh, Spartan Nation. Relax. So, what kind of timeline are we looking at, Brian? Spartan Nation. Relax. It's being worked on. Everybody is at the table. Everybody's got their pencils up, not down, and just dotting some I's, crossing some T's. So there's – be patient. Why, why, why we got to be patient? Why? Because when there are lawyers involved and mm. there is legalese involved and certain terms involved and certain things involved that you or everybody else or me can't understand – so the lawyers take over, and just be patient. Be patient. And if we got to wait another couple of weeks, if there is a opportunity where we need to become impatient, we will let you know. Mm. How about that? We'll let okay. you know. 
That's but, fair. But 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 in all fairness and all honesty, everybody's working towards uh, um, a resolution. Everybody's working towards a common goal, and um, you know, contracts are just not that simple. They're just not that simple. So we um, let's just sit by patiently, and when I lose my patience, you will know. <laughs> <laughs> this guy loses it every single no, day. No, not but, at all. But like with not this, I understand. You <laughs> not at all. I'm just saying we're all on the same team. We are. We are. We are. We're all patient. We're gonna get it done. Let's play Penn State. Let's get done with this week. Let's enjoy the game. Let's go out for ten, and oh, and um, we'll go from there. We gotta get this thing announced, man. Everybody, listen. Everybody's on the same page. You got the board of trustees, the president, the AD. Uh, everybody wants to get a deal done, so just chill out. We're gonna work. We're gonna work through this. And we're gonna get it done. Is, we gotta like woosa. I, when when the is the woosah recruiting woosah signing moment. period? Yeah. So yeah, the recruiting signing period is December fifteenth through the seventeenth, I believe it is for the early signing period. So like for you know us recruiting buffs out there. Like, we need to hurry up and get this done so that the guys th- that are going to sign then are confident enough that they know that they're not going to be negatively recruited against saying, oh, you know, your coach that you're going to sign with is probably going to leave. We can just put that to bed. Put it to bed. I, I am quite confident that before that signing period that a, a deal will get signed before then. That that I can, I'm not gonna say guarantee, but I'm I'm pretty confident that a deal will get signed before that the beginning. Of we needed we needed a little bit before then though. Oh. You know, it'd be nice to have it like yesterday, like last week, before before the games and all. Jason, this stuff. if it was up to me, it would have been on three weeks ago. I mean, geez, I mean, that, what are we waiting a, on, man? There's just the I's got to be dotted, T's got to be crossed. Here, dot cross. Dot cross. Yeah, I know, but if it was, how, if how it was you was and I, I, if it was you and I, would have gave the guy the house. I mean, but there is absolutely no doubt in my mind. Mel Tucker will take MSU to heights they have never reached before. And let me say this, Spartan Nation. Internally, within the leadership, within the athletic administration. Within everybody that I know, they all believe the same thing. That in this era of NIL, in this era of social media, in this era of recruiting, that Mel Tucker, regardless of what happened versus Ohio State, regardless of what happens versus Penn State, that Mel Tucker, for the future, is the right man to lead this program. Trust me when I tell you that. So just be patient. Let, regardless of what happens Saturday, with all the injuries or not, it, it, it doesn't matter. The long-term vision has not changed. So everybody's working towards a common goal, towards a common resolution. And, um, you know, God willing, it'll be done soon. And it will especially be done before recruiting. Mm. Take that. To the bank, shall we say? To the bank. Yes. We like that. I mean, we like that, man. I mean, it, 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 hopefully hopefully, a deal does get done. I, you know, there's a lot of people waiting around for this, and uh, I think a lot of recruits, too, that want to make their final decision. Th- there are a lot of recruits waiting around. There yeah, are a lot that, of recruits that, that, waiting around. That's a tough part. You know, I, I remember being a recruit, and it was nowhere near the pressure that these guys As have now. As you said last week, recruits, come on down. Come on, East Don't, Lansing. Hey, show Jason. Put the camera on Jason. Come on, East Lansing. Don't worry about that. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. You know what I mean? It's going to be on, all East right. Come on, East Lansing, man. Just, just hey, all you guys that are doubting, that have are hate, playing Haterade, <laughs> all you four or five stars that are wondering, you know, what's going on, don't worry come about on. it. Come just on. come. Come, we got, we got you. you. We got you. 
Jason, J Jason's got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Brian's got you. And he's got daddy's. I ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's got, you know, that NIL. That's an NIL guy over there. No, no, no. We got everybody on board. Listen, we got everybody on board. Just be patient. Be patient. It's going to come when I get it done. No problem. Let's shift to MSU basketball. Because we're experts. Basketball. Hoops, baby. MSU went 2 0 this week. Beats <laughs> Butler and MS. Uh, uh, Eastern. Uh, Eastern. Yep. Whoop. There you know, it they, is. Walk, they walked in the Henkel Field House and you know, Gabe Brown put up nineteen. Max Christie had eighteen. And that was not as close a game as I thought it was gonna be. Mm. We we walked in there pretty much I don't have we seen a Butler team that bad in a while? No, it's been a long time. I mean we're, I, I think we're a little better than advertised. <laughs> yeah. Of course we are. I, There's absolutely. no doubt about it. I, I think this That's is, a tough place to play right there. When you when you look at what Tom Izzo has been putting on the court the last couple of days here, I mean, you can see the pleasure in his body language when these guys start playing, especially on the defensive end of the floor. This guy, I mean, look, we don't know everything in the world about basketball, but I'm looking at the results. No, no we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we, we know everything. We're, we're experts. But I'm, I'm looking at things like Malik this. Malik Cole came off the bench with eight. Julius Marble had six. Yeah. They gave us great minutes. Sure we do. What are you talking about? <laughs> We're experts. <laughs> Absolute experts. All I know is Hogarth had six. You know, that's a guy who, you know, look, like they have some, they have some talent on this team that we haven't, had I, I think in my Marcus opinion, Bingham in a while. Jr. is going to be the surprise of the year. He's a guy, seven footer, that likes to shoot that three. But as soon as he starts to be able to get down underneath that basket where he belongs, then he's going to make a lot of money. I, I just think he's better. A than lot of money. He's better than advertised. I think Max Christie's going to catch on. He's going to uh, be a star. He's going to be a star. I think Gabe Brown's going to have a breakout year. I think Tyson Walker is going to get comfortable in the point position, which is going to help Joey Hauser. And you saw that this week, right? They they won two games, 2-0 two oh this week, headed to the Bahamas, playing a 4-0 oh Loyola team. Do we have we went at, we had Eastern Michigan. We got Eastern Michigan highlights. Uh, there it is. We thumped Eastern Michigan 83 to 59. Right, where Marcus Bingham Jr. had the game of his life. He had uh, 12 rebounds, 19 points. Malik Hall had 18 points. Max Christie had 13 points. Gabe Brown had 10 points. You know, we showed our athleticism that game. Really came out. We ran the court well. I mean, these are the type of games that get us ready. You open up with Kansas, and then you play some um, some teams. Butler Butler was not as good as I thought they were. No. Uh, no. But I thought we played very well uh, against Eastern. Started out a little sluggish. Really picked it up at the end. But I think he's got some – I really think Coach has some nice pieces. You know, Max Christie playing, playing the two. Tyson Walker playing the one. You got Gabe. You got Marcus Bingham, Bingham Jr., a a A.J. Hogar. You, you got a ton of guys that are going to come – you know, depending on which night's going to show up, I think that's a nice two and zero that week. And going into the um, into Atlantis, into into the Bahamas, playing uh, Drew Valentine four and zero Loyola. I think um, I think we're going to be okay. I'm surprised we didn't crack the top twenty five. Not yet, but it's coming. Yeah, we, no doubt about you, it. You it's look coming. at that box score. I mean, if there's anything, I think that. Um, you know, that has paused for concern is the um, three-point shooting. That's probably one thing that has some concern. So, I mean, I think we need to work uh, work a little bit better. He got on. it! Will, that, Mil, Will, Will Teeman. Is Will on set? He, he's going <laughs> to get a little bit more of that. Right now, they're so, shooting 23%. Yeah, I think you can't go four for 17 in a three-point range against Eastern. You can't against good teams. You do that, you're probably not going to win. But I think they're still finding their way. That's one thing about Coach. You know, he spends November, December, 
Yeah. Middle part of January. By February, the team starts to form. By March, they're... Oh, boy. He mixes and mold <laughs> like a piece of clay every year. It's Same. rough watching uh, Michigan State basketball in November. Oh. It is. It's, it's rough. Jan- you know, January's rough, too. Yeah. <laughs> it's January's rough. rough. And then Big Ten season. they're going at three-game losing streak. Yeah. Even in February, sometimes they're going on a three-game losing streak. Then they'll get one game. Then they'll hit four in a row, five in a row, six in a row. Then they just start peaking, and you just say, how the hell does he do that? <laughs> how does he do that? Every year. Every year. Oh, is. What did he say about is. Marcus Bingham a little bit? What did he say that you can't say on air? What did he say the other day? <laughs> he just he just basically told him if you uh you know stay down underneath that basket, then you can, you're gonna make a lot of money, and you can then uh you know you're gonna be happy that I that I told you to do that, and not those you're kind of words. You're going to what? Kiss my <laughs> oh what? kiss me. No, kiss <laughs> me. Hey, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Kiss my mother. <laughs> That's fantastic. But uh, you know, coach has a way with words. Yeah, he does. He does absolutely has a way with words. God love him. Yeah, it's November, which is preseason. I mean, it's pretty much preseason to coach, but you come out. Nice, strong win at Henkel Fieldhouse. Historic Henkel Fieldhouse. You come back in Saturday, 5 o'clock, play Eastern Michigan after the Michigan State football game debacle. You run the table. Uh, Bingham and Junior is getting better. Max Christie, Max, Max Christie is getting more comfortable. Yeah. And you're, this will take some time, but he's putting this team together. He really is putting this team together. So... I expect the. Uh, why not ranked this year? What 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 is that? Three and one for not ranked yet. What's up with that? Look, man. They don't deserve to be. Does ranked it care? Yet. Do they don't care. No, yet? they don't care. Nobody cares. It's all good. Let them sort it out. That's how basketball goes in the beginning. You know that. You know, let them let them figure things out for the first three four weeks, and then the real rankings will start to show. Uh, similar to what they're doing in the college football playoffs. So, you know, Michigan State right now, uh, unranked in basketball, 12th ranked in the college football playoff scenario. I think that they will end up the year, you know, I think Michigan State basketball will be in the top 10 when it's all said and done. And uh, Michigan State football, hey, jury's still out on that. But top 10, I think, is another place for them. I think both teams should be in the top 10. Get that W, we will be. Absolutely. I do want to give it a shout-out to my dear one, Heights Raiders. Lost yeah! A heart- lost a heartbreaker in the championship, 13-7. Uh, played Washington May's first time, lost 26-0. We got this- to recruit this uh, quarterback from Washington. Oh, I, he can I'm play. He can here. play. So, Montana life. 13-0 uh, at halftime. Kids battle back, 13-7. At the 50-yard line, five minutes left, had a chance to win. I, you know, the fight. The fight of these young eight- and nine-year-olds. That's I, all you can ask for. I have for. played big-time athletics before. I never thought I would be so excited for eight- and nine-year-old game. <laughs> I, I'm so proud of these kids, the way they battled back, the adversity that they showed. I'll tell you what, every Saturday in, in, in football, there's the biggest game of somebody's life being played somewhere. And that is the greatest feeling in the world. Because somewhere in America, somebody is playing the biggest game of their life. And it was fun this past Saturday. Yeah. Nostra Damas. Nostra Damas. What do you got for us? Well, I'm going to tell you what, Brian. I'm going to give you one thing and one thing only, man. And that is... Michigan State (laughs) will absolutely. (laughs) What is it? They're going to win 10 games, baby. They're going to win 10 games. That's their big prediction? It's it. They're going to win 10. They're going to definitely do 10. (laughs) We talked about it, you know, uh, a couple weeks ago. I think that. 
you know, this is a game that that's it's a winnable game. I, I agree with you. I think you know what? We're gonna win ten with smoke and mirrors. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do because we got thirty two guys out with injuries. <laughs> We're not making excuses. But but I'm gonna tell you what. Hey, we gonna get there. We gonna get it because James Franklin just got paid. And Mel Tucker hasn't gotten paid yet. That I guess that's that's the reason. You want to pay James Franklin seven point five million? That's what they're doing. Ten years, seven point five a year. And you're gonna tell him Mel Tucker ain't yeah, worth nine point five. We're still hanging in the balance. We're still hanging. Yeah. If you know anything about football, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> just give me a break. It's just that simple. But so your pick of the your. What's your, your, your lock? Me? Moose's lock. Talk to oh, me. Oh, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell you right now. Them Buckeyes. <laughs> oh. If you want to apply the transit of property in football, which doesn't work, <laughs> in theory, Ohio State should walk into Ann Arbor and win 61-7. to Uh-huh. In theory. Not happen. My math is off. 60-7 to because we beat them by four. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a closer game, no question. But Ohio State will walk into Ann Arbor. We'll go nineteen and two in the last twenty one games, and they will beat Michigan by more than fourteen points. Ooh, that is my pick. My, by my more than fourteen. Week. Yes, by All more right. than fourteen. All right, man. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again. This is Brian Mosalem from Inside the Locker Room. Along with my co-host, the Honorable. Yes, sir. Jason Strayhorn, you are watching Inside the Locker Room. Thank you, good night, and go green. God bless. He's 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 nice block. Wow. Great penetration surge through the middle of that Michigan State first and goal. Yeah. Outstanding play.